Hello. Um, <laughs> I, okay. <laughs> I don't know. How do you start a podcast? Who's to say? If you're listening to this, I have to assume if you're listening to this, you've already listened to the other various episodes we've put out, in which case you should know that we don't know how to start or end N- or none. middle. <laughs> we or don't know how to talking. podcast. We, we talk just... about books, get wildly off track, mm. and never really find we it sure again. do. Yeah. <laughs> That's us. <laughs> um... Yeah. Hi. Hello. Welcome to Romance Your TBR. We're doing better already. We said the name of our podcast in the first we minute. We sure did. So. In the first, look at in, us. Yeah, I know. Uh, I mean, critics, it, wow. We just won awards for best podcast. We? Yeah. Oh, yep. that feels bold. Anyway, mm-hmm. I'm Caroline. And I am Hannah. <laughs> and I am proud of us for introducing ourselves. I'm proud of us for recording tonight. Honestly, because yeah. Part of me was like, what if we just don't release an episode on Friday? It is currently Wednesday, Spotify wrapped Who day. would care? <laughs> but I just feel like it's such a Let slippery slope. Let us know slope. if you would care. <laughs> like, it's Somebody like, tell us. That's please. true. We would just never release an yes, episode again. So then it's like, if we don't once, then it becomes you don't ever. Yeah. And. We yeah. can't do that. We can't do that can't. to our one dedicated listener. So That's true. That's true. Shout yeah. out. <laughs> Shout out to you. Um, I mean, yeah. The Do you have Spotify random or do you have Apple oh, Music? Oh, yes. Yeah. I How was your Spotify, Spotify wrapped? How'd that go for you? Um, predictable. Nice. It, nice. it was I always every year I'm like, "Oh, Sp- well, I love Spotify wrapped." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, that's my favorite day of the year. <laughs> I love judging other people's music. But every year I'm like, oh, oh, what's it going to be? As if it's not just the music that you listen to. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know I what have, it's going to be. I have, like, the three playlists that I listen to at all times. And then yeah. that's it. Like, I'm not I, adventurous. I, like, I just put whatever music I currently like into a playlist. Mm. And then play on a loop all the time. Or I will hyperfixate on one artist so Mm -hmm. lately it's been either taylor swift or the rex and i just Mm -hmm. put their like songs on shuffle and that's it yeah i've got so of course they're my top artists (laughs) i've got my taylor swift playlist with all of the taylor swift songs sans a few that i don't like um or that make me cry and then i've got my hannah's random playlist that i've been curating since like 2015 and that's like a hundred hours long like she's thick she's long um that's all like classic rock and like older music so some like earlier taylor taylor swift in there um but like that's just a very eclectic uh one and then um i've got my um early 2000s movie soundtrack playlist um with a picture of amanda Bynes and she's the man that's the cover of it um so there's a lot of like green day avril um just all the things paramore um i'm forgetting a bunch but so like that's what i thought so like my top five songs four were taylor swift three were three were midnights and one was message in a bottle (laughs) because that song is like my jam i remember listening to that like all the time but then my final song was oops i did it again by britney spears (laughs) how how many times did i have to listen to oops i did it again to have it on my top five but i i don't remember listening like there was a i remember i listened to like britney's best hits like one day but now it's in my history my personal history of oops mine are definitely i mean my number one song was 10 things i hate about you and i was like oh okay Mm -hmm. ran like i liked that song Mm -hmm. i I still like the song and i think it was just because it was on my playlist of music that i was currently listening to that i would shuffle through and so it i guess it just came up more times than any of the other songs. Like, I get... Well, I also don't listen to a ton of music, and I wasn't listening to... Like, the first half of this year, there's almost nothing from that... Because I was listening to... If I had any time, I was listening to audiobooks. And so only within the past few months have I really been using Spotify more. So it's like Taylor Swift. Mm Mm-hmm. Harry Styles. Yeah. My my listening minutes were cut in half from last year, and I'm pretty sure it's because of all the audiobook listening. Like, I don't regret it. Um, I do love that I had Hungry Eyes by Eric Carmen. That was in my top ten oh, songs. That was classic. number nine. I that's my car song. 
So along with like Faithfully by Journey, like if they come on the radio and like I've been in the car, my mom has been driving and like Hungry Eyes came on and she was like going to turn the train. I was like, absolutely not during Hungry what Eyes. World? Like that is my song. Um, and Take Me Home Tonight by Eddie Money. That's another classic. Like those are my three. <laughs> like if I hear them on the radio, it's like I've won the lottery. Um, but yeah, the re- I mean, Taylor Swift was my, she was my top artist um nothing else too crazy well what really gets me is that like i it's like oh spotify wrapped like the music that you were listening to and i mean i was i didn't think elton john was gonna make it into my top at all and he ended up being number five but he would be higher if it considered the fact that i listen to most of his music on vinyl i listen to taylor swift on vinyl too but what I really want is for Goodreads to oh, come up with a Goodreads good route. Because they do the, like, year in books or whatever where they just show you all the books <laughs> you read. But I want stats. And I don't like StoryGraph's Story user interface. Yeah. I haven't even tried it. it I like use a lot it. Of work. I like the – I mean, I, I like being able to have the stats. But at the moment, I've been using my spreadsheet to do my own stats mm. because I just don't like the – I just don't like the user interface on StoryGraph. I like the information that it gives me, though. Mm-hmm. Are you, you're able to, like, connect your Goodreads and StoryGraph, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you just, like, import your library into it. It won't automatically yeah. update or anything. Yeah, I'm going to have to do that because, like, maybe I'll do it end of December. So, like, we have my full, like, 2022. Um, but, yeah, I, I mean, I've read so many books this year. Like, I don't even know what my stats would be. Apparently, I give, like I said before, the most five-star reviews out of the number of reviews to give. So, I don't know. That's all I got from my own <laughs> stats. Um, and also, I'm just a rereader. Like, I know um, Spotify had, like, the type of listener you are. Um, mm-hmm. I don't remember. Mine was, like, early listener, like, whenever someone has new music mm-hmm. because it's Taylor Swift. Um, but, like, for books, I'm a complete rereader. Like, will reread all the time. So that I want to also... know. I remember on TikTok last year, is I think when I started. See, it might have been the year before, but I I really remember last year people would do their own like books wrapped. Mm-hmm. Like they would design I... the little thing themselves. Yeah, and I was like, bro, I wish I had the skills. If somebody knows how to do that and wants to just like do it for me <laughs> or teach me, because I don't know how to make that stuff. Like I could technically do it. Like I got That's Photoshop. a lot of work. I want someone to do it for me. Yeah. I mean, and we're going to, for our podcast, we're going to do like um, our best of and like, like yes. what are they called? Superlatives or something. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I can't wait to talk about the books that I didn't like because <laughs> I feel like we talk about, we, we like recommend books, you know, that we want to read. Um, no, that was intentional. I know. Because I don't like talking about books I didn't like. Oh God, I do. I love talking about books I didn't like. Hmm. I'm just very forgiving. There are very few things you can do to keep me from liking a book. Oh, we're so different. I know. We're so so different. I'm aware. (laughs) I was thinking about that earlier today where I was like, I will forgive a lot of things. And that's And even when it's like you did a thing that pissed me off, the one that we always talk about where like the book was really good, but then the third act just murdered it. And I was like, that was still like a three and a half star. Like I still was like I would read it again. It like yes. pissed me off. The third act, the person who groveled didn't need to be groveling, but like yeah. Eh. Versus See, you were like, fuck that book. I well, I well, the thing is like when I first rated it, it, I still gave it like four stars. Like I rounded up, but like thinking about it, I was like no, so I rounded down. But I didn't like like it's still like a three star, which for me is like pretty tame. Um, because I, in my opinion, it. It just ruined what was so good, um, but like that's not even like the most dramatic I've been. Oh um, wow. no! But um, even in that, like, does it still make me angry? Not really. But I don't think I'd ever reread it again. Like, since I do like to reread, like that's kind of how I judge it. Like, if I'm not never gonna touch it again, like I would never need to read it. Then that kind of also impacts my rating. Um, and that's, that's why I like dropped it down to the three. Um, just because I was like, you know, it ruined it enough to where I just, I mean, I don't remember, like, I don't remember any of the book besides the third act breakup. (laughs) Like, I remember nothing. 
everyone's like it's so steamy i'm like i remember none of that there was like maybe a kitchen table like um it was a dining room table a dining room table there was also a bath scene there was also (laughs) listen those scenes did stick with she did she unlocked something for me it's so that may bad. Be, I mean, I'll admit I've reread the scenes. They're marked in my Kindle. I revisit them. I revisit the ones of book, like, but I mean, I should go back and look that. My friend just read it. She borrowed my copy. She liked it. Um, my but, guy knows how to dirty talk. Yeah. And I, I, I truly don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember at all. Like, my – so blank. Um <laughs> So blank. I have issues. I have flaws. Like I said, I'm flawed. I'm a flawed well, human. Speaking of a book that you have reread <laughs> and will reread. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now that we're oh god, 13 minutes into recording. That's okay. That's uh, okay. This is just good. This is just gonna be a vibes episode. It, aren't all of our episodes just vibes? Yeah, and then we Isn't try to get the serious. whole podcast. <laughs> anyway, we're here to talk about Kit McBride gets a wife. Mm-hmm. Gets a wife? Takes a gets wife. A gets wife. a wife. Yep. Gets yep. a wife. Because he doesn't take her. He gets no. her. <laughs> Stop. He does. He's just <laughs> given her. He doesn't take her. He truly is. She's just, she arrives. She twists her ankle in a rabbit hole because he's so large and scary and she like passes out. No, the, it's the brother. The brother is so large and scary. Sure. Again, don't remember. <laughs> This is why, right before we started recording, you've read this book twice now. I've read it once, but apparently. (laughs) My twice is her once. So, like, me reading a book twice gives me the same amount, maybe less, as we've established, recollection. (laughs) Because, like, you pulled out stuff. you read, like, twice as many books as I do, though. I just, like, you pulled out something from one of my favorite books, like, that I had no clue about, and I just reread it. And I was like, hey, that's what Caroline remembered, that I had zero clue um so and you don't okay. even like that book so <laughs> it's fun. wait what are we talking about what book is this scandal in spring um there was like something that he did or like someone did in scandal in spring and i had no clue i didn't oh. remember it it's in like it's some episode bother me. oh yeah it was. Sure. <laughs> yeah well but again you read like twice as many books as i yeah. do so i feel like you got more going on and and see it works since i do like to reread i like there could be plot twists that i don't remember <laughs> Like, I mean, I'll be writing the review for a book I just finished, and I'm like, who are these characters? Like, who who are they? What are their names? We're losing the track again. Yeah, you know, vibes. Get McBride. Anyway, we were going to talk about something else, yes. but the HarperCollins strike is happening, and a lot of the books we wanted to talk about were Avon. So many. And we're trying to avoid posting reviews mm-hmm. HarperCollins books so as to not cross the picket line and it's if you're out. if you're like devastated that you're not getting that episode of kids in historical romance email hr at harper collins and be like hey mm-hmm. you've disrupted my life please pay your employees more money please do and, and be better we sure would love if you just yeah. did that them. you know there's also donation that you can donate to the strikers um Indeed. so in solidarity we chose to scratch that and just do um, a book we both read, didn't prepare for. We decided no, this, this a few hours ago. It was just like, oh, hey, that's a book. <laughs> and like. it's like, there's a snowstorm. It's starting Winter-y. to get w- into winter. It's wintry. And I listened to the last 20 minutes of the audiobook um, <laughs> when I was eating dinner. Um, so I know how it ends. It's a quick refresh. <laughs> It was a quick refresh. I was like, eh. I like looked. I was like looking at my physical copy, and I was I, like flipped to chapter twenty two, and I was like, oh, that seems interesting. So then I just like <laughs> put it on while I was eating my curry, and it was a good experience. I love the narrator, Eva Kaminsky. Love her. Um, she does. She has to do an American. Oh, actually, I think she is American. Um, but she does like an American accent in this one, and then uh, Maddie's Irish. So good accent work. She does good guy voices. Yeah, you love to see it. I, I this really book, do. every time I talk about and and you know what's crazy for us to be talking about this. Book I know is that it's not even closed door. There's no. It's nothing. There's no door to be closed. No, it is they, like it is an it's, open concept. It is an open concept house. There are no doors <laughs> to be seen. <laughs> open floor plan. <laughs> yeah, you just don't need them. No. There's nothing to close a door on, no. and yet. 
And normally we are so picky oh, about yeah. like it's really hard to get me to like a mm-hmm. a closed door or otherwise like cuz I think that's an important part. Yeah. And this book did it. It it they didn't do it, but it did it. Yeah, like, you get it. Words. <laughs> like um I saw someone on Twitter going off on this book because it was clo- like it didn't have anything and I was like but the vibes the vibes like, I think Urgh. I I could have used a sex oh, scene I think particularly I'm not going to say no Well right well but but I think because it was like the virgin yeah. hero like he's barely even yeah. interacted with women and then in the you know role reversal mm-hmm. she is experienced and so yeah. I think that would have been an interesting oh uh, for sure like relationship experience like i yeah. i would have liked to have seen that at least the first time to see how they navigate it um but i don't think it needed it no it didn't like, like make me angry that it wasn't there no and it was so cute the scene that we did get which was just them like making out like all night so like you got like their beginning make out he was like hard but they didn't do anything about it like he was just like so living it up that he's kissing a woman a woman who he like he's known eight women in his entire life Two of which have been related to him, his mother and his sister. So, like, he's got no clue. Like, some of his – like, one or two of his brothers are, like, the the players are, like – they're – one has at least some experience. Another one maybe doesn't, but he acts like he does. I don't know. Um, But, like, Kit, nothing. Like, nothing. And so (laughs) he sees Maddie and he's just like, oh, my God, a woman. (laughs) I love him. And – it's the purest, like, most adorable interaction of two human beings that I have read in at least 2022. Because mm. it, he just, he was, he was just so sweet. He was, was so sweet. sweet. The whole thing is sweet. Every time I and talk about this so book, su- I'm like, this is tooth rotting. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a it's a cavity rush. on paper. I don't. It, that's why I had this for Sweet Nothing in our uh, Taylor Swift mm-hmm. Midnight's episode because, like, like you said, like in that episode, you said that there's not like much plot going on no. because basically, um, the first half of the book is his sister writes on behalf of him, even though he doesn't know she's writing, um, to look for a wife, a male order bride, and then this like heiress or whatever, like not even heiress, just like wealthy but also not I think wealthy. She's a widow. Yeah, a widow. A a widow was running out of money. Yeah, so she had like no money. She was looking to be a mail order bride. She responds to the letter. Uh, Maddie is her um, like housekeeper maid, but she's also not getting paid because she left Ireland and found the first thing she could find. And um, so then they travel to Montana, where the book takes place, and through shenanigans by the young young sister June Bug. Um, the widow leaves and Maddie is on <laughs> like she's in this carriage going to um, the McBrides in their cottage. That's like a, a good chunk like of distance away from the, the village. Well, they're like and up so, the like, mountain. Yeah, they're like up the mountain. And so she goes up there to I think like ask them for a ride home because she still she's she's asking that- for money. Yeah, this poor <laughs> girl is stranded in this tiny town in Montana because what's her name? Uh, Willabelle. Yeah, Willabelle. I think. Uh, yeah. just left. <laughs> Didn't even tell her. She was like, "Bye. <laughs> Here's my dress." Yeah. Because um, she got she and no money. She was getting it on with some other guy in town, and she left with him. And um, was like horrified by who she thought mm-hmm. was. Kit, yeah, which was not June Bug. Kit. June Bug pretended that like Kit. some town, like some town old man who was like chasing after something, like being kind of cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Um, she was like, "Yeah, that's Kit McBride. That's the one you're gonna marry." And Willabelle was like, "Nope, bye bye." Anyway, the man is <laughs> stranded, and they're uh-huh. like, "Yeah, go ask the McBrides for money. Like they'll help because, you." Because like and they, she's they, like, oh, yeah, because like fine. in her mind. Kit was expecting a wife, so this is his fault. <laughs> yeah. Even though he's got no clue. So she's like, yes, this makes sense. I will go up this mountain and um, get my money to go home. Well, like I mentioned before, she gets dropped off because there's uh, there's like only a certain amount of 
like distance the carriage can go because it's too mountainous or whatever. And so then she like gets out and she sees this like towering like um Bigfoot figure walking towards her and she's like absolutely terrified. <laughs> He's like got like a mountain man beard. Uh, like just huge. And she I'm trips already in love a- with the brother by the way. I can't <laughs> no. remember his name. So um, I'm in love with him. Morgan. It's Morgan McBride oh, because Morgan. Yeah. Because his book is just now up on Neck Alley. I requested so fast. Um, And so Morgan appears and she puts her foot in a rabbit hole, twists it, goes down in pain, gets like, like faints because she's scared in pain, all that. And then Morgan's like, there's a woman here. And Kit comes along like, oh, my God, (laughs) there's a woman here. And uh, Kit and Maddie had like had an exchange um, in town. And so he's just like, oh, my God, it's her. Wow. My woman. And, and then, then Junebug's like, just pretend to be her. <laughs> yeah. Just be cool about yeah. this because they're already mad at me. Just pretend to be Willabelle so they don't think Cause... I've screwed up even more than I already have. Because, like, <laughs> Maddie wakes up from her, like, fainting jaunt. And she's, like, too scared to speak. So she <laughs> so she can't, she can't, like, articulate that she's not Willabelle, that – all she wants is like a way to get home like she doesn't she can't say any of that because she's just paralyzed in fear and so they're just like oh hi willabelle she's like oh hi and um i'm the problem it's me and um and then june bug is like please just pretend to be her i don't want to get in trouble like this june bug's didn't... like the funniest goddamn character in the world yeah because because she's got money like she's got money to, to to give to maddie after this like Maddie made a deal with Junebug so that Junebug would then pay Maddie's um, trip home if June Maddie Bug is just, just so real for this yeah. entire book. She's hilarious. Like, the first at least chapter or so is from her perspective, and you get, like, a few of hers. Junebug, I really... I, it, 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 giving her the first chapter mm-hmm. was a bold and move. It's not, like, it's not first-person POV, but, like, it, no. you, you, you get the, like, narrative voice yeah. depending on whose chapter it is. Mm-hmm. And number one, her narrative voice is the funniest one. And yeah. two, it's just her being like, guys, I don't know how to cook. Like, <laughs> no one taught me to cook. And all five of her brothers being like, yeah, but you're a woman, so you're going to cook for all of us. And her, like, blowing up the she, building. Yeah, She's she like, just blew up. Like, I don't <laughs> like know how to time. do it. I don't like it. I don't want to wash your gross laundry. Like, mm-hmm. let me go do this other thing. And then everyone else just being exasperated. And poor Kit. But also, poor June bug. <laughs> also, um, the uh, the stupid bit where she just has to write all of her complaints in a book. Yeah. He doesn't want to <laughs> listen to it. So he's like, just write all of your issues down in this book and I will read it. And then he just is like rude about I want to steal that so badly <laughs> to my future partner slash spouse. I just already know I'm going to have a book and be like, I don't want to listen to you complain write it in the goddamn book because like to his like in his defense it was like teaching her how to write because like reading is like a huge thing for him like he loves books he, <laughs> he like just walks around <laughs> quoting poetry he walks around qu- quoting poetry he like specifically like he doesn't want a mail order bride he wants like a mail order book order like he like sends letters to like minnesota and he's like like that's his like monthly thing that he does and like gets books in exchange and like no one can touch them his is it like his dictionary um, it's like his yeah, most prized possession. Well, any of his books, he has a trunk yeah. of books, and no yeah. one's allowed so to then, touch them. So then, Junebug has to like ask permission to like use the dictionary, and like she's very like literate and smart too, because like she grew up with him, and so like she is the in town. She writes letters for all of like the fur trappers, like the, the traders, um, who roll through who can't read or write. So she like will pen um letters for them, and that's how she found out about the mail order bride because she was writing a letter for one of the guys who want a mail order bride. And she was like, wait, this is a great idea. This is how I get out of my cooking and cleaning. I will get my brother a wife. And since Morgan is big and scary, I will get one for Kit because he's kind of nice. He's her. He was her nicest brother to her. So that's why she chose him. As the Although lucky. I find I'm like very excited for the second book, number one, because I love Morgan. Mm-hmm. Um, I just the whole time was the like, dynamic. Oh, Morgan, between, oh. Morgan is so good, but I am fascinated by the June bug and Morgan dynamic. Yeah, <laughs> because um, because he raised uh, her. Yeah, he's essentially her father. Figure. Yeah, 
And at the end of this book, um, spoiler alert, Maddie and Kate get married. Who knew? What? Who knew that was going to happen? And so after they get married, Junebug hears Morgan saying, yay, he's got a wife. Junebug's got a mother. I can go. I can go be free. I can go fly like a peacock. And Junebug's like, I'm not having any of this. So then what does she do? She writes a letter to the the heroine or she somehow finagles it to where we get a second book. <laughs> and I'm so excited. It Ugh. And just like the Morgan like, is there's, so funny. And there's nothing better than like a brotherly dynamic or like a group of like male like heroes. You know, like oh, yeah. Tessa Dare's got some that like they all just like band together like at some point. That's why sometimes later books are better because then you get all of them interacting um, as like the heroes like get introduced or whatever. Um, and like there was a scene where uh, neither Kit nor Morgan had like shaved their beards in like ages. Um, and so when Maddie, so then Maddie, there's like a huge snowstorm. <laughs> Got the <that> scene. <laughs> so like before, the, like so Maddie has to stay, and she's like staying in their cabin, um, teaching Junebug how to be a lady. That's what their trade was. It was how to be a lady in exchange for money to get home, because um, Junebug needs some etiquette lessons because she's just a little unhinged creature same um and so they're around this fire and kit is just he's crushing so hard he's got such a big crush on her and he's being so cute he puts on (laughs) he's like asking morgan to like if he should like wear his like nice shirt and stuff and like he's like should we shave and there's a scene where he forgets that morgan's like really fucking hot (laughs) like he forgets that like morgan can pull someone if he wants to so He's like, I'm going to shave. You should maybe shave so you don't scare her. And Morgan's like, I'm not going to shave. Like, I don't care. And then Kit's like, but, like, we got to be nice. So no, then Morgan's he, like, like, he goes to Morgan and is like, yeah. you're going to shave your beard because yeah. you yeah. scare her. And then Morgan's like, I don't want to. And then obviously Morgan knows that Kit is just absolutely in love with this woman. So, <laughs> so there's a scene where Morgan then shaves and Kit sees him. And he's like, oh, my God, my I, life is done. Like, she, he's so hot. <laughs> like, she's going to love him. Like, how can I compare to him? He's got a dimple. I forgot about his well, dimples. And Morgan is intentionally making <laughs> Kit's life hell this entire yes. time. Because first yes. he's like, oh, are you going to go put your, your best yeah. shirt on? Yeah. Are you gonna Are you gonna dress up? And, and he like, like he teased. <laughs> no. Uh, he teased Kit dog. out of the idea. So then Morgan shows yeah. up in his nice shirt and Kit's like, yeah. oh my God, <laughs> he looks so good and I look so and ugly. And then proceeds to flirt so hard with Maddie, which is just hilarious based on how Morgan has been for the entire book yeah. previously, which is an um, angry mountain Grumpy, man. Grumpy, yeah. And then he shows up and is like, no, wait, this is going to be funny. Let me just hit on this woman, which like barely even hit on. Like, yeah. talk it to just, really. Let me just, just talk a conversation. to this woman and get so mad about. But but to Kit, since he's had zero experience with women, like one word to a woman is like flirting to him. Like it's like a proposal of marriage. Oh, and so and like Morgan knows, and it's so good. And it's just so like a, Kit's like inner workings of just like oh my god, like I've lost my chance because she's gonna like be in love with him because he's so like pretty. <laughs> and so um he's yeah it was just the purest scene of him just absolutely regretting all of his life choices <laughs> and trying he to like really does oh he god really does. specifically i i liked morgan in that scene mm-hmm. because because you can tell he's doing yeah. it to bother kid. yeah like, like you knew funny. you knew he wasn't like into maddie you knew maddie wasn't into him like it was just hilarious. It's just such a – that's a such a fucking sibling thing. I think what it really gets me is, like, I think sibling dynamics are hard for me to read in, mm. which, like, I have a unique sibling dynamic anyway because all of us are so spread out in age. Mm-hmm. So, like, already really close siblings are kind of odd for me, which mm. – just because I haven't experienced them. But, like, I think sometimes you read a book where there are siblings and you're like, that's not how siblings uh, – yeah interact yeah. what are they're so you? supportive they're like a little too nice to each other <laughs> yeah. we're like yeah yeah i don't know about that i they can't be nice to each other all the time yeah that's not how the like i find it so much more believable when the siblings just fucking hate each other mm-hmm. but like not really but yeah. also 
<laughs> are like intentionally out to ruin each other's lives. And I really feel like Amy Barry nailed the si- the sibling dynamic yeah. of Junebug being like, I fucking hate you guys. I'm gonna go write my like complaints in this book. You guys are the worst. I can't believe you're doing this to but me. But then like and then she Morgan was just being like, you're an annoying little shit. Like we uh, need to because... figure out what to do with you versus the other brothers just going off and doing whatever is going on with so them versus they're... Morgan giving it a hard. It was so good. The the other brothers, like the younger ones, had to like go find something at some post for they're off they, on their own journey. Gone. They're 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 doing their thing. Um so it's basically just Morgan, Kit, and Junebug and Maddie in the cabin. And then at some point Morgan leaves, I think, because there's a huge storm. Um Yeah, he has to then, go try to find the brothers. Yeah. Yeah. And which then Kit is also, also where and, the dynamic yeah. with Junebug gets really interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there's also a scene where, like, like I said at the end, um, where you mentioned how Morgan basically raised Junebug, and so like Junebug, despite all of her griping, like doesn't want him to go. She's like, he's basically my fault. Like, I don't want Morgan to leave. So that's like her idea is to bring a woman in and <laughs> get him to stay. Um, but yeah. So then, the, then a snowstorm happens. And it's like huge. The windows are sh- like sh- shaking. Everyone's quaking. And um, they're like, oh, our brothers are going to get stuck in the storm. We should go out and look. So then Kit and Morgan venture out. They come back in, frozen to the bone. And what happens? <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. Massages to warm up the frozen extremities of one Kit McBride. I mean, Junebug has I never to do thought it a heroine rubbing the hero's feet would work for me. I bet Lorraine Heath has. <laughs> I'm sure she has. <laughs> But uh, I never thought that I no. would want to read it. No. I still don't know if I need to. <laughs> it it, it happened. I mean, I know. I feel like Kit McBride is very clean. Like, if anyone, it would be – like, I feel like he's just a very clean man. Um, This is true. Well, they also and made so, a point of that. Yes. And so, like, I, if I was going to rub anyone's feet or read a scene, it would have to be Kit McBride's feet, I guess. And they're cold. So what's really going to, like – so she's got to like she's got to like rub all of him like his feet, his back, his hands, and he's just like, oh my god, <laughs> like this is heaven. This man. And is then uh, Maddie's like, oh my god, he's huge and burly, my mountain man. <sighs> and um, so while all this is happening, obviously Maddie's trying to teach Junebug how to be a lady when Maddie doesn't really know because she's not of the nobility or anything. Like she she can barely cook either. So then Maddie <laughs> tells Junebug, like, I can't cook. Like, I can cook this one thing. And I, I don't, like... And so then Junebug's like, are you even going to be that useful for us? Like, you can't even cook. And so I think she wants, like, a really good cook for the next book. I can't quite remember. But mm-hmm. um, she wants someone who can, like, bake a pie, I think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, that's who Morgan's going to get. Um, and it's just the, the funny and cute and... If you know going in that there's not going to be any, like, steamy scenes, like, and again, the the vibe of the book didn't really set up anything sexual. No. Um, So, like, even what we got, I thought was even more than we were going to get. Like, him actively having an, an erection. <laughs> it was never called an erection. It was just, like, his hard length or something. Um, and Maddie was like, are you going to, like, do anything with it? And he's like, no. <laughs> we're just going to keep kissing. He's so and then, <laughs> and, um... And yeah, I mean, I had we both had a marvelous time. Um, and he makes her a tea kettle. Oh, <laughs> I think I cried. <laughs> uh, listen, that man he went into his forge, and he oh yeah, he's like a blacksmith. Made her a tea kettle, and then he was all embarrassed about it, uh-huh. and it was a whole thing. Well, because her whole thing was that she always wanted tea because, like, well, they're in Irish. Montana and they don't really drink tea, I don't think. And so, like, her coming into this house requesting tea was, like, a new thing. So then she, like, got him to try it and everything. And so then he's like, I'm going to make her this kettle because it'll be useful. And, I like, Kit knew how to make tea. It was Junebug that was, like, Junebug no was idea, confused. And she just made the most disgusting <laughs> tea. And Maddie's like, absolutely not. We are not doing that. That's a June bug thing. Yep. So, yeah, he makes her her own tea kettle. While he's, like, sweaty and shirtless and huge 
Oh my god, like, and then he like, away. waves her into the forge, and uh-huh. he's like, do you want to see it? You don't have to. That's probably <laughs> stupid. And she's like, yes, very much, very much. Please go take your shirt off and work in the forge. Please. <laughs> I would love to see it. And I was like, me too. And all during all of this, Maddie's pretending to be the Willabelle. So, like, that's, like, the crux the of the Willabelle. third act. The Willabelle. The crux of the third act is that... Um, she's been hiding her identity because Junebug, that's what she wanted her to do. And Maddie was like, okay, whatever. Um, and so like during the kiss scene, he calls her Willabelle and thank God, I thought she was going to stop and like get all emotional about it. But she's like, now nah, it's fine. <laughs> I know my priorities and that's kissing my mountain man. Um, so she built a bridge and got over that real quick. Um, but then, obviously, things happen. Her identity gets revealed, and Kit's a little bit sad because he was very honest to her. And I mean, she was honest about everything except for her entire identity. But, you know. Yeah, everything except for that. <laughs> it's casual. Um, oh. and it, and like it wasn't like a breakup that would like make you angry or anything. Like it was just so sweet, and you were just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think the funniest thing about this book is that, by all accounts, it shouldn't be one that I particularly enjoy. I yeah, yeah. am, like, there's no real plot, which I'm not big on external plot, mm-hmm. but I'm big on character. I need there's mm-hmm. I need there to be something, co- which, not that there's no character development, but, like, it's not huge. <laughs> there's not, well, he's huge, but, you know. Yeah. Uh, th- so there's not a ton of plot. There's not a huge amount of character development beyond, you know, it's a, it's a nice, gentle falling in love arc. it's a There's it's a lazy river and it's a lazy it's, river you float yeah. along there's not i'm a i i not that i need angst in every book i read but i mm-hmm. like a little a touch of angst mm-hmm. some high stakes i like an alpha hero i like them to get absolutely destroyed yeah big fan of um an asshole men just, who like, hurt <laughs> yeah getting totally ruined uh and it, this had none of those things mm-hmm and yet here I was kicking my feet and it was giggling. So cute. I was just tee hee hee all the way through, <laughs> kicking my little feet, grinning my little grin. I just like same, you know. Like I had my meltdown on Tuesday about the wedding ringer not having any sex. Like I sure did lose maybe like a year of my life from that. Um, and, like, I mean, I am definitely one for, like, just very, like, Lazy River plots. Like, very cute, low angst. Um, and so, like, it's not less, it's not as much of a surprise that I loved this one. Um, I also just think the humor is, like, right there with oh, what I like. Oh, so funny. You know? Yeah, no, it, And it so, if, if the humor in a book can, like, be at my level of what I want, then other things are forgiven or, like, I can look past certain things. And like I said, like, I didn't think that it's not like a contemporary romance that you have the main characters talking about sex, talking about all of this, talking about their history and experience. And then it's closed door when all of the vibes before that were like, wow, they're going to like be the absolute like craziest shit in the bedroom. But like in this book, you didn't have any of that. Like no, you it, didn't, it the, didn't make sense for them to. No, definitely and not s- before getting married. Yeah, and so like, would I have loved an epilogue where they were doing the do? Yeah, would I say no? No, but <laughs> I didn't like actively need it to like not give this book five stars because it was so fun and it was it's a comfort read and like. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I'm sure call me a hypocrite. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> I like what I like. <laughs> but I mean, I feel like there are a lot of things that we have now had to Oh, like we've yeah. said, oh, I hate this and then had to back up because immediately followed that up with a book that does it well. Quite literally. Which, like I which is why I hesitate to ever say like, oh, I don't like when a book does this because mm-hmm. most of the that's time why what I never I mean is that's a thing that is hard. Yeah. Th- where I'm like I love second chance romances, yeah. for example. But I also am very aware that it's really difficult to write a good second chance romance in a contemporary yeah. that I will not hate. Yeah. But I love Relatable. second chance romances when they're done well. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's why, you know, it, some people are like, if you like, you know, you can like read the back of a book and you're like, maybe that's not the plot for me. But 
I don't want to be like limited by just the like the summary. Like that's why I rarely read summaries. I kind of just go for it. Um because like you never know if it's going to work for you. Like no like even if it's a trope you hate, like it could still really work. Like I've read multiple where like I've hated the overlying trope but still love the book cuz it did it in a way that I liked. And so like it, it's hard to really judge before you read it. And same thing with like I don't really DNF. It takes a lot for me to DNF. Um, because either I'm angry enough to where I want to write a negative review and I don't want to look like a fool who's like angry about all this shit that was resolved like 10 pages later after I DNF'd. And so like, I want to come with receipts and like have reason. Um, but like, that's why I kind of, I'll just try Like, even if like, I didn't like a first book, um, like the Anna Bennett one, the girl's before Earl's I didn't like, but I read her second one, which I loved, One Duke Down. I think it's still read now on Neck Alley. Maybe by Friday it'll be down, but check if you haven't. Um, like, if I would have been like, no, I don't like the author, then I wouldn't have read it. So, like, sometimes you just got to go for it. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, Kim McBride, man. Like I said, the second one's up on Neck Alley now. So, And the audiobook, very good. The cover, very cute. My one qualm is the cover. There are there's no horse. They don't ride a horse in this book. Why true. are they lassoing? He's not a cowboy. Morgan is the cowboy. And and Kit looks rather small. Looks yeah, so that trendy. was my only. I just wish we could have gotten like, I, I guess him in a forge wouldn't really work, but something else. Like I just feel like it gives the wrong. I mean, it's the vibes are right, the colors are right. It's cute. They could have. They could have been sitting around like a fire or something. Like yeah, something cute. You I know? just whenever I recommend it, I have to be like, it's a western, but it's not like a like they're not Yeehaw. actually riding horses. Yeah, cowboying. They're like it's <laughs> it's a western, but they're like snowed in a cabin. <laughs> Don't let western, the horse on the cover cowboy you. <laughs> Listen, that's a. That's great a point. A professional term from a real life Texan. I own a horse. I know what I'm talking about. Uh, tell the episode. I know a horse. I know what I'm. I, know I a own horse. a horse. <laughs> I she knows a horse, a horse too. Horse. She I know what horse. I'm talking about. She knows what she's talking about. Uh, Lucy <laughs> approves this mess. Lucy is the horse. Aw. I do not own a horse. If I were to get on a horse, I would have a panic attack. That would be too much height for me. I'm good at my five four. <laughs> I got a pair of Doc Martens and it makes me like one inch taller and I feel like I'm like freaking the Statue of Liberty. The, feel- uh, <laughs> the guy that I'm dating is six foot seven. Yeah. And uh, I'm five foot three. Yeah. And so number one, I had a, one of my friends, shout out, I don't know if Crystal listens to this, probably not, but she was like, start invoicing him for your neck massages. Because <laughs> I was like, I have to look up when I talk to him, <laughs> like uh, craning my neck up, but he can pick me up. And the first time that he did it, I swear, vertigo. I was like, this is how you experience the world? It's so high. Six foot seven. He's so, he sent me a picture of like the, he he bought a a condo and he like sent me a picture of something. And for a second, I was confused because of the angle of the picture. (laughs) I was like, why is it like, like level with the kitchen cabinets? Like I was so confused. Like, the ceiling was way closer than it should be in a picture of your condo, right? And then all of a sudden, I was like, oh, my God. That's just how you see things. That's the level of your eyes. I'm already so clumsy. I don't know what I would do with extremities that are equal to a body of six, seven height. Like, how would I – like, how would I – like, Maybe you just would be less – maybe you would be slower and therefore less clumsy. I don't know. I mean, I really feel like smaller people. J- ha- we have the same amount of energy, but smaller body, so it makes <laughs> us like. That's why I think I swear to God, shorter people have more anger, like <laughs> because we have the well, we have the same amount of anger. It's just condensed, mm-hmm. and so I'm like five foot three. Of well, it's also concentrated like, rage. It's also concentrated rage because like if I'm wearing a mask and I'm like in public, like with not any platform shoes on, like I probably look like I'm like seventeen. <laughs> like I've definitely like I will probably get carded for the rest of my life. I will. Um, 
She's laughing so hard she can't talk. In high school, we did the, I was a theater kid. And we did this thing in my theater class where we would do, um, like, our first show of the year in this particular class. Um, there was an elementary school within walking distance from us, so we would do a kid's show, and then we would take it to the elementary school and perform it there. And the first year I did it, we did a Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And we did it in, like, a library. It wasn't a the. It was just, like, we were just in a – we were doing our – you know – the off stage was like behind bookcases and they could see us and it just didn't matter because it was elementary schoolers. Anyway, I played Veruca Salt. Mm. And the way that this play opened was that the uh, golden ticket winners were all planted in the audience and they oh, would like fun. jump up and talk, right? So all <laughs> of these elementary schoolers are sitting on the floor in the library and I'm already sitting on the floor because we all are just planted <laughs> in the audience. So they just come in and like, sit around uh, like we're just in line with yeah. them so i'm like dressed like veruca salt wearing the most ridiculous like pink like fur Velour. thing with a giant <laughs> bow in my hair whatever uh and i'm sitting in line with all these like second graders and they're talking to me and actually as a side note that was one of my favorite theater experiences because the girl <laughs> next to me got so into it where I was like I'm Veruca Salt you know like my, my daddy's yeah. going to pay for what I, and she was like I love the, your outfit and like got into my character and I was like oh hell yeah let's go so we're going back and forth meanwhile they're getting everyone situated the teachers are walking around doing that thing that you have to do to elementary schoolers where they're like sit all the way down sit all mm -hmm. the way down on your bottom sit all the way down right and they're like trying to make them get off their knees and stuff and a teacher looked no! me in the eyes and went sit all the way down and I just looked at her and it took a, a hot <laughs> second for her to realize that I was not a like second or third grader she fully was like <laughs> sit all the way down and I was like I am like <laughs> I was a sophomore in high school oh my god that same kind of situation happened um my sister when she was in high school went to the same high school that I went to um the first summer of COVID um she had to go back and give them an iPad that she had and so I just like dropped it off for her and they like changed all procedures since I had went there um because this was that would have been 2020 I graduated in 2016 so that's already like four years and um I had to like go in I had to like talk to this one guy which at this point in the pandemic I hadn't had any like outside interaction of like anyone so I was in I was in a mask I w was probably wearing like Birkenstocks so got no height and he's like I was like, oh, yeah, I used to go here. I don't really know, like, where to put this. Like, I can't get – I don't know. Um, and he's like, oh, yeah, when – like, you graduated last year? And I was like, mm -hmm, I'm in I'm in, I'm in, in grad school. <laughs> so, I was like, no. Um, I actually <laughs> graduated in 2016. <laughs> Look, some of and us that was be fun. short. We're just yeah. shorties. Yeah. I was like, okay, that's nice. <laughs> So that also I, – I feel like I couldn't be a teacher because I'd have no authority. Like, they'd all be taller than I am. Like, they would not take me seriously. How would I discipline someone like that? No. So – You'd just have to be a really cool teacher that they like. I, I would have to be because I wouldn't be able to give someone a bad grade. Like, I would be so scared. Like, I would be so uncomfortable, like, having to, look, like, make eye contact after, like, giving them, like, a B-. minus. Like, I couldn't do it. I can't babysit because I can't, like – like pun it like I can't like enforce any rules on anyone else's children. Like You're a nightmare. I, I'm so uncomfortable with it. This like I, so I can't stressful. Yeah, yeah, like I I don't want to like have this child hate me. So then I would I mean, like yeah. I get scared of small children. <laughs> well you know. We once again lost the track. Yeah, that's okay. This None of this had anything to do with Kip eh, and Fred. No, Except for the really. um, height difference romance. True. Which always makes me laugh now. Yeah, being – every time I go out with a – You're like, hey, over a foot you. taller than me. I saw a tweet the other day that was like, it's a height difference romance. He's very tall. She's very small. His <laughs> shirt hits her at the knee. Like, we get it. Yeah. He's bigger than her. And I was, like, looking at the picture that I took with this guy on a date the other night where I barely come up to his shoulder. I was like, look, I unabashedly love a height difference romance. 
Yeah. I know I mean, it's overdone. I know it's overplayed. I know tall women want their rump. Sarah McLean, if you are tall and you're like, oh, I just want tall women to have their rump. Read some Sarah McLean. They're all tall. I am short and I love a height difference. <laughs> I really do. I eat it up every time. I know it's like heteronormative nonsense. I don't care. If you owned a shirt at all in your life that says, I'm not short, I'm fun sized. <laughs> you are. <laughs> You're predisposed to like the height difference from lenses. <laughs> those were those were big when I was younger. I'm not Are short. I'm fun size. Like like the little candy bar. Yeah, so I'd have I like a like, knockoff candy bar. I got it. I just hate it. Yeah, <laughs> I was like looking at this tweet of like all these like different um, celebrities wearing like old 2000 like graphic mm-hmm. tees, but they were more like just phrases, and they were so good. Like Britney Spears just dump him. Iconic. So iconic. But yeah, I guess that that's all we've got. For oh my Friday. god. Yeah, that's it. That's the episode. It really was yeah. just vibes today. Yeah, that's fine. Um, um, HarperCollins, pay your workers more. That's for the, the love of God. Of the it's, it's I just want to like, talk about my Avon books and also Krusty Krab is on for you to pay your employees. It's been like 20 some days by the time this airs. With no contact from you, I mean that is shameful. Oh yeah, maybe like, by the time we this episode goes up, they'll have. Um, maybe I asked my mom. I was like, "How long do these things like last?" Like, I feel like, and it's gonna get cold. It'll be on their picket line. Yeah. So, H H. I'll link it in the show notes. But H C P Union um, on Instagram has a lot of um, good notes and graphics, and just please for fair pay <laughs> and i think it's also for diversity in the workplace mm-hmm. um two things that they shouldn't have to plead for mm-hmm. but after a banner year for harper collins um so yeah that that's why you're getting this vibey episode oh man no thoughts just vibes read kit mcbride <sighs> quite literally it's it's wednesday right now and that's so close to friday that my brain has stopped working oh relatable well between all my medical crises and medications and Mm -hmm. not being able to sleep because of said things we are in crisis we are in crisis we have crises (laughs) in crises yes (laughs) in multiple (laughs) i've like barely read a book I did read India Holden's next one though. I, I saw that. that. I have the quickly. I have the arc, and well, I, have, uh, I have so many fucking arcs. We'll talk. I'll I'll talk about it in the next TBR Tuesday. Yeah, I'll probably have maybe I'll. That's like I'm gonna edge that one like no other. So like, that's probably gonna be the last one. I re- I have like six or so. I've got a few Berkeley. Uh, I've got an Eva Devon from um, Entangled. I have a bunch that I'm behind on. I've got a YA one on. from somewhere. Yeah. Mm. Like, I, I did pretty well in, like, getting my – so, like, my ratio is still, like, 95, 96%. Um, but I don't like having outstanding mm-hmm. arcs because I just, like, get a sense of dread Oh, and I've had many for quite some – I mean, I'm still at, like, 80-something percent. Mm-hmm. I'm good. But I have a lot that I need to catch up on. Yeah. Anyway – uh no catch up on your vibes. yeah yeah if you're if you are a reader and a reviewer catch up on your arcs do it read one a week it'll help um i've got nothing else no so. that's it get some sleep <laughs> get some sleep um if happy you get friday in, if you get snowed in by some snow hopefully you've got a big uh mm-hmm. mountain man blacksmith. lumberjack blacksmith type person um, next to you, who's going to make you a tea kettle and carry and, you around because you carry your you leg around. and you can't walk and kiss you all night and just all be night really fucking cute all night all night gotta get wow. some chapstick in there. Don't forget the chapstick. That's critical, <laughs> especially in the winter with the, all that dry air. Yeah. Ooh. Don't forget your. <laughs> don't forget your chapstick. Okay. Anyway, you can follow us that. on socials. French book reviews, Salty Caroline <laughs> reads, Romance or TBR. That's all she wrote. 